My name is Kyle Wilbur. I'm with the Department of State, New York State Department of State, and I'm in the Division of Local Government Services at the Department of State. Um, you know, I, I know a lot about schools because I went to one, I guess. Everybody thinks they know how to run schools because we all graduated. That's really all that, you know, m my background is in what you would think about as, I guess, more of traditional local government, towns, villages, cities, um, special improvement districts, fire districts. <clears throat> well, what I'm going to talk about today, our program, we have funding available at the Department of State to also assist schools. Schools are defined for our program as local governments. And, you know, I know that a lot of you participate or, or work with um, your towns and villages, um, maybe even water districts on, of course, because you're, you're getting infrastructure from from, from water districts or sewer districts. So I want to go over our program. Jerry asked me to talk about it. Um, you know, I, I don't have to tell you, there's some slides that we always present on, you know, multiple jurisdictions in New York State. You know, we have some people listed as 10,000 different um, jurisdictions. We have 1,600 general purpose local governments, cities, towns, villages, school districts, oh, city, towns, villages, um, and counties. So I'm going to talk just briefly about some of that, but I'd like to just give you some examples of, of where schools have been involved in our program, um, and then maybe spend some time talking to you folks about what you're doing and if you've applied to our grant program in the past, or you know if you have some ideas uh, that you want to run by me. I'm going to talk about our program in the context of this year's budget. We have. $4 million that will be available, we hope, starting April 1st for projects with local governments and school districts. So this is small, it's, it's good. I don't have to talk to you folks so much about the positions you're in and, and, and then you know, your need to reduce costs or, or, or the financial position that you're in. I'd really like to talk about some projects and figure out if there's a way we can help you move something forward or, or help. Um, here. I really enjoyed the first presentation and at the end of this presentation they are folks here from Otsego County, Schoharie County, Delaware. Warren County, Washington County, Delaware, Delaware County. Um, some of those are eligible for, for some different funding that we administer at DOS as well and um, there might be some opportunities to do some of that school-based health care or, or some other things that we can talk about. So I just want to get, get going. Can you hear me fine? I have a little bit of a cold for the last eight weeks it seems like. <clears throat> My son's out of school for the last two days. I told him he's he, he's a kindergartner and uh, my mom was a nurse and I remember I had perfect attendance for the first four years of, of, of school, first five years. And I told him, I said, buddy, they're gonna come grab you and take you in and he didn't care, but he's sick now. <clears throat> so, you know, here's, we know where we're at um, with, with property taxes and, and income and inflation, you know, there is a tax cap now. We all we all know that, and I'm not going to go into that so much, and or the proposed legislation on on the property tax freeze either. But you know, we need to. I think the big thing is, and, and I'm sure you see in your schools, it's we're not doing things the way we used to because we don't have the people, we don't have the students, you know, and and things are changing. So. Um, I'm dealing with a city up in, in Oswego County that's lost 3,000 jobs and, and, and their budget is, is in pretty rough shape. And a lot of it is because they still provide the same level of service and, and it's hard to pay for that right now. So you know, what can we do to help, help folks change those types of, of services? These, these figures, if you can see them, these, these figures on fiscal stress came from the Comptroller's Office report in 2012. And it shows that um, School districts, 29% of our school districts um, had an operating deficit between 2009 and 2011. So, um, you know, that's the way it is with, with a lot of local governments, counties, cities, towns. This is a map that just shows um, what it looks like when you overlay all the local governments in New York State. These are our towns, um, I think villages. And it just grows, school districts, maybe. So there's, there's just a lot of stuff going on, but a lot of opportunities also to share. 
you know, I think I, I can probably speak for a lot of my friends, and, and you know, they don't even consider schools on the same level as towns and villages, you know. But you're all doing a lot. Towns don't educate students, but they, but they maintain roads. They, you know, villages don't educate students, but they provide water. They, they provide recreational services. So how do we kind of marry those things where they make the most sense and, and work with you to identify projects? You know, we're, we're at a crossroads, like I said. You know, um, unfortunately, our population has declined. Our student enrollments have declined. And, and folks are doing more with less, but there is a need to kind of rethink, I think, how we provide certain types of services. So um, how do we make up for lost revenues, you know, with the tax cap, um, with the fact that property values are going down? Um, how, do you, how do you make up for those, for those changes? You can do it through efficiency and cooperation. The first time I ever presented on this topic, I really didn't know what the heck I was doing. Um, it was seven, eight years ago, and I had a supervisor in Westchester County tell me that you can't name me a supervisor that is trying to raise costs. And I'm sure it's the same thing with, with schools, you know. So you know all this, you know. We're always trying to find ways to become more effective, more efficient. How do we leverage our regional assets? You know, the, the, the consolidation, you look at our, at our list, we funded 23 cons reorganization studies over the last eight years. Only three or four of those have moved forward. You know, but I remember a discussion with, with a superintendent on Long Island who told me, look, we have to do something because our kids are losing opportunities to learn. They're, they're, they're losing different types of programs. So, you know, how do we leverage the regional opportunities amongst, amongst schools best? Um, share resources. One thing that, that, that we're, th th this deals, I think, more with smaller municipalities, villages, and towns where you have part-time officials. They don't have the time to plan or, or, or measure the performance of their programs because they're so focused on, on just answering the everyday needs and, and putting out the everyday brush fire. So, you know, by working together, we think, you know, th th there's more of an opportunity for performance management and planning. Hopefully increased efficiencies at, at reduced cost. <coughs> I'm talking in a little generalities right now, too, about all the local governments that are eligible, there is quite a lot of authority to cooperate. Basically, if you can do it on your own, you can do it with somebody else, right? So, you know, there's the Constitution permits it, general municipal law permits it, town law, village law, city law. Challenges, you know, I'm, um, ma'am, in the front row, I, on the way in, I heard you talk about well, we try all these things and we get almost to where, where it's going to happen and it falls apart, right? So, you know, there are a number of challenges, and the first one, you know, is getting along. Um, you know, I was talking to, I think it was Jerry Steele, but when he invited me to come, we were talking about reorganization. Here he is, Jerry. And, and the point was, sometimes if you let the kids vote, they're the ones that would want some of these things. You know, um, but it's parents. You know, it's, it's, it's community identity. You know, we also do work with local governments on consolidation of villages and towns and, you know, the studies show value, but when it comes down to it, folks, they're still tied to their places, and and you know that might be a valid reason. You know, maybe may, maybe you keep a village or or, or an oil local government, but you but you but you create a regional organization to provide most of the services, and you keep just the planning function in a village. You keep just you know the, the land use function. So you know there's there's a lot of opportunities, and and you know I'm not professing really any right way or wrong way. Um, but we know that folks are doing a lot of different things and there are a lot of opportunities. Community identity, I mean, you know, that's obviously the sports teams and, and schools and, you know, um, I live in a hamlet. Folks drive through it, they probably think it's a village, but it's not, it's just, it's just an unincorporated place. So all that fun stuff and the stuff you already knew, what, what do we do? Our program, was was created um, in, and I forgot to start my clock, so I'm already 10 minutes slow. But it was established in 2005, and it's gone through multiple iterations. Schools have always been been an eligible applicant, but we want to provide that what if funding, that incentive funding to, that could help you implement a project you've been thinking of. Um, you know, where the funding's been hard to, to get or, you know, it's, it's, 
it's, it's earmarked for, for a different purpose, an educational purpose. So how do we coordinate you know, joint solutions and, and, and help you to reduce costs? So it's a pretty large program as far as what we can do. It's not large as far as the amount of money there. But you know, we, we want to help you provide objective information on government reorganization or service efficiencies to help develop new options, changing how we do things going forward. Our program, there is, I'm just talking about our local, our local government efficiency grant program. <clears throat> we do have funding. Schools used to be able to apply to us for a non-competitive grant if you were looking at reorganization. Um, we still have that non-competitive grant, but that is only for general purpose local governments that are looking at consolidation or dissolution. But schools, that's called our Citizens Reorganization and Empowerment Grant. Um, we've, you know, again, it's not competitive. If anybody is on here on a town board or a village board, um, you know, you, you, you could come to us for that. <coughs> our traditional program is our Local Government Efficiency Grant Program. It's a competitive program. It's annual, on an annual basis. We used to be on our own. Who here has heard of the Regional Economic Development Councils and the consolidated funding application? Last year, we were put into that process. I don't want to talk about what I think of it. But it's, it's a good process, but it was, it was hard for folks to understand or figure out why our program was in the CFA when that's focused on economic development. It is what it is, it's in there. So this year we anticipate we'll be in that process again, which starts in the summer and, and folks get notified um, at the end of the year, late fall. It's a competitive award. Local governments can get $200,000 per local government up to a million dollars. And again, schools are defined as local governments. So if, if, if a school district wants to work with a village on technology or, or, or something like that, and you have, it, and you have implementation costs, you could get a $400,000 grant. The match to that would be 44, it's 10%. So, so if, if you had a $400,000 project, we would reimburse you $360,000 if you were selected. Pretty, pretty good return, pretty good money, 90 cents on the dollar. For implementation, we can also fund planning grants. They used to be the, treated the same way. Now they are not. Planning grants are a 50-50 match, and you can get $12,500 per local government up to $100,000 for a plan. So if you wanted to do a transportation study of some sort, um, Rensselaer, City Rensselaer has done work with eight regional school districts on out-of-district transportation here. Um, are working, they've received funding for that. So um, there's a difference. Planning is not as, I guess, lucrative. Um, the program has been tailored to focus on implementation. Again, eligible projects include reorganization of local governments, functional consolidations, meaning you know, the functional service levels, consolidating those, one, one group providing that service for another, City or County Charter Review, that doesn't apply here. Cooperative service agreements, regional ser regionalization of services. And some local governments, depending on fiscal stress, can come to us individually to look at internal restructure to, to, uh, as, 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 as a type of an application. Eligible expenses include contractual costs. So you, you know, obviously you could hire a consultant if you, if you needed service that, that your, you know, your school couldn't provide legal services or, or you know, technology consultant. Um, again, I, I'm sure you have a lot of ideas in your, in, in, that you're thinking of. Capital and construction. <coughs> Sorry. What, what, when we started out, and you'll see some of the projects seem to be very simple construction or, or capital type projects. When we started out, we funded some salt storage facilities, that type of thing. The idea behind the construction funding is we'll fund 
building, we'll fund equipment, but we want it to be key to a change in how the service is provided. So you may need a new maintenance facility, but now you need that because you're doing it with a village, a town. We had one project that was voted down, unfortunately, the, the, the voters in the school in Steuben County a long, you know, number of years ago. They were gonna work with the state police, the county <coughs> sheriffs, they were gonna have one maintenance facility. And it sounded like a great idea, but you know, it was difficult and, and, and just things didn't. I had to do with some of the funding I think that schools could use um, as, as aid. So we will pay for construction, we pay for a lot of construction. For example, another example is um, a, a wastewater system where you're consolidating three plants and now you have one and you need upgrades to the one. So stuff like that. <clears throat> Equipment. One of our projects, and this seemed unique to me, but I don't know if it is. Um, Erie, Erie One Boses in, in, in Western New York needed some equipment because now they're, they're managing all the computers for their, for, their, for their districts. At the end of the day, they turn them all off, saves energy, saves them a lot of money, and they're also uploading upgrades to all, this, all the computers all around the, the, the Boses region as well, so we pay for some software and hardware for that program. So just an example of, 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 of a project. Transitional personnel, um, you know, if, if you're functionally consolidating a service and, and you as the school district are the lead and you need personnel to help you administer that for a period of time to get you over you know, an initial cost hurdle, you know, maybe you need to hire new staff for three years to, to implement the program, we can pay for that transitional personnel. Normally, staff and personnel are not eligible for, for reimbursement, but if it's transitional staff key to implementation, we can pay for that. You can't see this chart, but when you apply, again, one of the you know one, one of the key scoring factors is cost savings. So we we've developed a chart, and what this what this really says is, you know, show us the impact within your budget lines of, of the project. You know, if, if you can see this, we have revenues and expenses um, before implementation, after implementation. You know, a, 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 a school may receive a new revenue now, I guess, from a different local government because they're providing a the service. Their costs go down, the difference would be the savings. Um, so just be aware that if you do apply, we'll have a worksheet similar to what you see here, um, and we'll ask to see your best estimate what the cost savings are going to be. Um, again, it's not data that, that you have to go get. I mean, we use, for local governments, we use Open Book New York on the controller's website, um, and it's just basically downloading information and using, sometimes you have to use some, um, not guesses, but um, make some assumptions. We can help you out with those assumptions too, because we have other completed projects, you know, we could say we know that this school saved 10% on their transportation line because they consolidated a few only facilities with others. Um, so we have those examples for you. Again, the application will be in the summer of this year, we anticipate, so um, there's, there's enough time now to start thinking of ideas and I, I don't have any cards, but I'll give you my contact information before we leave and we can call and discuss some projects. <clears throat> so outside the grant, we also have some technical assistance we can provide. Again, sharing those best practices, um, case studies, um, examples of other, other completed projects. So what are we doing with, with, with our funding? A lot. Uh, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go through just a couple examples of things outside of schools. Um, you know, we, we've received over 1,400 applications in seven years. We request over 280 million dollars from from local governments. We've awarded 375 applications for 60 million. We anticipate that those the savings from that 60 million dollars will accrue over 500 million um, over the long term. Um, basically, the return that we that we are seeing on our completed grants, once the grant has been implemented, 
the state get, gets its money back the first year. So the return's 100%, the savings versus what the grant has cost us. So we, we base our, our long-term savings on like a 10-year window because we figure after 10 years, most of those savings are eaten up and, and they're not, you know, but it's just a way to measure. They're not hard and, and you know, hard facts, but you know, we, we want to measure how, how we're doing and, and what, the pro, what the projects are, are intended. So we, we helped the village of Seneca Falls in, in Seneca County um, with their dissolution. Uh, very big, the biggest village in, in, um, in New York State to dissolve. Uh, pretty close vote, but the residents saw a 50% reduction in their tax rate for dissolution. There were some different circumstances out there, um, but you know, we, we, we helped them with that. Wyoming County, Wyoming County has done a uh, Wyoming County is, is, is a rural county. It's the number one agriculture county in New York State, I believe, or has the most cows of, of all the counties in, in New York State. They have a lot of small little villages, a lot of water systems. They needed capacity, so the county stepped up, worked with them, created a water resources agency for all the villages, so they're using the county's capacity for, for engineering, for water testing, and, and, and helping out the villages in, in that role. Fire District Consolidation, the Hamlin Warren Walker Fire District was a three-way merger in, out near Rochester. Again, we paid for some um, contractual costs, some capital costs for them to consolidate. They had some needs because they now are a three-district company, a three-district fire uh, protection pro, uh, group, so we helped them with, with that. Uh, emergency, emergency Dispatch. Uh, again, we, we've done that in a number of areas where, you know, instead of go calling the, the city or the village and then, or calling the county through 911 and having the county send the call back to the village, and then they dispatch their folks, you cut out the second phase, you know, um, you call the county, they dispatch all the, all, the, all the emergency services for the county. I thought that was happening everywhere, it's not. Um, so just another idea of what we've done. Police consolidation in the village of Saugerties in Ulster County. Both the town and the village had a police department. Um, the, the village has dissolved their department, and now the town provides it town-wide. So those are non-education type projects. I, I have some listed here for education. So far, out of those, what did I say, 260 different applications, schools have been involved in 77 of them. Not as lead applicants in every one, but is it either a lead or a co-applicant? And the funding total has been about $9.5 million. Again, a lot of those, as you'll see, 23 of those were for, re for reorganization studies. 11 for general shared services, 20 for shared facilities, seven for central business offices. We funded one of those in Herkimer or Fulton, I think that's now disbanded. Bosey's was doing a, a central business office out there. I think it's now disbanded, unfortunately. Shared equipment, recreation and grounds, health insurance, and uh, transportation. Again, really, it can be anything that, that you guys do. The one thing that we've had a hard time breaking into is instructional services. I think because it's hard to show the, the, the savings there it's more about the quality of, of, of the service, I guess. So we have, we've done one. Last year we funded one in, in Milford Central School District. Um, it was a science curriculum that they're, that they're developing and sharing with it with another school. Lawrence. I'm sorry? Lawrence. Lawrence, yeah, okay. Um, that was interesting. To go back to the, to the Regional Economic Development Councils, they, they put it, there's a, a process now where they have to identify opportunity areas. Um, that grant qualified under an opportunity area in a sense. Um, so, you know, we funded one last year. We could probably fund one this year too. So, you know, a, a region-wide curriculum of some sort might, might qualify. But then it's all kind of like the non-educational services, I think, is where we fit the best. Transportation, you know, um, payroll, the back office stuff, health insurance, the, um, uh, is it the capital district? The, just give me a second, I want to. 
Capital Regions BOCES has, has developed a pretty strong municipal benefit, um, uh, uh, prescri prescription benefit program that, that we helped get off the ground with some funding. I know they're, they're, they're expanding that. They want to expand that to other local governments as well. So again, health insurance, classroom instruction is on the bottom again. Like I said, we haven't done many of those, but it could be something that, that, that we could consider. So school reorganization, you know, the most recent one that we've been involved with is uh, the Mohawk Gillian School District. It started out as a four district merger study. It, it ended up being just two. The interesting thing that I, that I noticed from this was that the kids were given the opportunity to name a new school, which I, you know, I mean, it's, it's good to have them involved. So, you know, if, if you are considering that, if, you know, if, if there's a push for that in, in your region or in your community, you can come to us for assistance. I know State Ed doesn't have any more planning dollars for, for, for reorganization. We work closely with them on, on the application to make sure that schools are giving us what they're going to need for the commissioner to consider, to consider the reorganization. Administration and management, we funded a very large project on Long Island with the Nassau BOCES. They work with their 40, with 44 of their component school districts on collective purchasing, um, telecommunications, out of, this, out of district transportation, internal audit. I know that when they came to us, it was just when the controller changed the auditing requirements for internal and external audits, I believe. Um, so now, now they're sharing that. Um, Four million dollars a year in savings is anticipated. Shared records management in Schuyler County. Schuyler County worked with uh, I think the town of Dis Dick School District and a couple other school districts, as well as the towns and villages, to do a shared records management program. Um, you know, some of the towns in particular had some pretty shoddy records management practices, and the, the records were in the basement, they were getting wet, they were getting destroyed. So the county and the school district stepped up and, and they created a regional records management program, saving $600,000 in construction and rental costs. So those are the, sp the specifics on the LG program. Um, again, I wanted to mention the, the ARC grants in the northern border after that discussion this morning uh, on, on, on the school-based health care stuff. Um, ARC in particular, you know, the, the goal of the program, it's a federal program where the state basically administers the money. Um, the idea is to these portions of states, 13 states, starting in New York to Mississippi, you know, areas are not performing as well as some of the other areas of, of, of those states. So we can help local governments, schools, other nonprofits with projects to increase jobs, strengthen community capacity, improve infrastructure. Part of the community capacity is health care. Um, you know, child care to help parents who may need child care to go to work. So something that we could think about if you're in one of those counties and there is a desire to, um, a need for equipment to establish a, a, a school-based clinic, we, we, could, we could think about that. And then a ver uh, the sister program to the ARC was created five, four years ago with the Northern Border, which is these counties in New York, disregard the color differences, um, portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and the idea is the same. You know, these are grants, match, matching grants, to help communities overcome various levels of distress, whether it's social, economic, or, 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 or both. So um, if you want to talk about those, I can as well. So that's my presentation. If you want to, I'd like to talk about some projects or ideas that, that you may all have on, on, on our program or if you have anything that you want to ask me about eligibility or, or, or what we could do going forward, that, I think that's very important. Now, that, that ARC money and Northern Board money, does that come out of your pot or is that separate pot? Sorry, no, it's a separate pot. We, we get, you're in Delaware County, right, sir? Yeah. We get about $2.2 million a year from the federal ARC pot to spend in New York. And, we, this and, and we've worked with DCMO BOCES, we've worked with Bassett before on other projects. Bassett did mo a mobile cancer screening. We worked with the MARC project. The, the MARC project, pro yeah, with, uh, with um, yeah, the MARC project, definitely. Can I, um, one of the frustrations that we see from the field in education is that 
it seems that the grants that are provided are for specific reasons that, that you know, some of us have been trying to think out of the box mm -hmm. in, relation, in, in relation to consortium reorganization. Not, not, not being driven through a BOCES, not being driven through an intermunicipal agreement with a, with, a, with a town or a village, but actually taking three or four school districts and putting them together autonomously and looking at the way that we can share. Mm -hmm. and, and we've heard that that isn't something that is possible. Uh, but our candidacy for uh, awarding of, that, of, such, of such an effort may, is, 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 not, is not possible. Um, you know, I we haven't. <coughs> I have to go back and look, but <clears throat> I'm not sure why it wouldn't be. Um, you know, and we've been at this for a long time now, and internally we're kind of rethinking the the focus on cost savings. You know, it's it's important, but like as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of about re resetting ourselves a little bit to, well, a, that, new, to a new way, and, 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 that, and that, we are thinking about that. That's why I'm sharing that with you. Yeah, um, is because sometimes. Uh, three or four school districts without facilitation through BOCES, where you do have shared business office functions. These mm -hmm. other mechanisms that you folks have uh, funded before, um, where, where you could have a actually sub-regionalization. Um, when you look, look at our BOCES, it's huge, right. it's broken in half. You got Seagull Northern Catskill BOCES. Um, sometimes sub-regionally, we, we can find levels of efficiency that don't even concern BOCES. Yeah. The other piece is, is the ongoing drive and discussion of one consolidation, functional consolidation, or regional high schools. Mm. So, so in preparation of some of those things, we love that opportunity to be able to have, seek these consortium grants to see if we can do some of these studies. Yeah, I, you know, um, again, I, I don't know why. It, you're not limited because you're not working through your bosses. No, I know that. Yeah. I know that. But, but, but typically it's, it's, it's uh, only in relation to consolidation and or reorganization. Mm -hmm. the, la the closest study that was done by us was Jefferson and right. Stanford. Yep. That was five or six years ago. Yep. It never happened. Nope. There were other things that went on. But, but the whole concept of that was to merge. Yep. Which may not be what you may not that, that might not be the viable option. Right. Because if you're talking about economic uh, recovery and revitalization, you close our school, I'm, I'm the superintendent of Roxbury, you just close my town. I had a bag. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, 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 yeah that's my school too. What's that? Uh, Roxbury. You went to Roxbury? No, I know, but no, I know where it is. <laughs> it's a beautiful school. Well, thank you. I know I know Kirkside Park and all that. And my, co my colleague here is from Martinsville. Yeah. And the idea of us consolidating to close right. does not, does no, not then you have, well you have, to the overall economic viability right. for the region. Because you have a building and left. Sure, I, you know, I, I, I'm not sure why we wouldn't fund something like that and we could talk more. Um, I'm not sure what the function is you're thinking about or just the number of functions. Right. Um, you know, but sure. And again, like I said, I think we've talked a little bit. We had a study done on our program on the planning projects. The recommendation was to de emphasize cost savings a little bit and talk more about the change in the service and how important that is. So. Well, that's good because because most of us have this view is that these are the things that the Department of State is going to is going to fund. So why do we even bother? Right. I got you. What's the budget cycle and budget calendar for the the ARC? ARC is federal. Okay. So what's going to happen is we will be um, just a point of clarification. We have a a, a reputation a little bit being slow. We try to speed it up, but it, it's federal, so it's the federal fiscal year. October first is when we get our money, we'll, but we'll start soliciting projects in April of this year. So it ends up being like a ten-month cycle by the time you know. But but you, it's a good time right now because because we'll be considering we'll be asking for new applications starting April first of this year. So you know we've done telecommunications with school districts. We've done. Um, I can't think of a, I, we, we've done, you know, we did curriculum development with some schools in, 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 in Southern Tier West, um, an environmental program that was new and, and, and creative. So there's all the, you have to look at the regional priorities too. They, they flow through a regional planning board. Where you're from, 
Richfield Springs. Rich, right, so you, you would be through Binghamton's board, which okay. is you know not really your region, but it's it, it, it's how it's set up, unfortunately. Um, but the director there now is from Montego County, so mm -hmm. so he, he's he, he's been talking. Is there was there a question over here, sir? Yeah. Uh, Answer the timeline question. Uh, I'm from Richfield Springs too, and uh, our school based health center is uh, very close to right. getting the funds, so we're not talking a huge amount of money. For the, a for the, uh, for the ARC, you said there's $2.2 million available. Is that for, for what, 2014? So it'll be two. It'll be 2014-15 federal fiscal year. And you find out whether you're funded in relatively ten months. Yeah, right. right. You'll 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 get the priorities from the region, and then we look at them for the state's purposes. But that's a separate person who reviews that department who reviews that application compared to the other kind of. No, it's all us. Oh, okay. it's, it's all under me, actually. Yep. Um, so. It, again, it's sorry to, to kind of co-opt the conversation for those that are not in the Appalachian region, but it, it, it's, a, it's a program that folks don't always know about, and it can be pretty creative in, in helping, helping communities. I was wondering if you have any examples of um, projects that may have funded distance learning opportunities, either the equipment and or the um, instructional improvement and collaboration component of it. Um, um, we've done technology, mm -hmm. you know, with, with I think schools and both governments working together for technology. Um, again, it's it, it's it's so hard to lump everything together because there's so many services and how do you how do you create a standardized scoring process for everything? So I think we would. It's just a matter of of, of how does it fit against the other competition that comes in, and how do we how do we show the priority, the need, um, the benefits going forward. Well, it's um, interesting you, you talked about the potential for expanding that criteria because with distance learning, for example, there might be some cost savings, but really particularly for rural schools, a lot of a lot of the advantage to it is in terms of expanding the opportunities mm -hmm. and um, honors classes and AP classes and other things that a rural school wouldn't otherwise would, have for its students. So without just, seeing it, I would think if, if you know, the seven or eight schools in Rensselaer County came together for a distance learning program that could show long-term savings, long-term benefit to the kids. It, could, it would be something that we'd be interested in. And one of the benefits of being in the consolidated funding application is the regional councils themselves get 20% of the score. So if, if, if you don't know the chairman of the regional councils, you should. You should talk to them and say, look, I have a project that might be going through the CFA. You guys should be interested because in it's reasonably important to us. It's reasonably important to you. So, I would I would talk to you know um, and, you know I, I know some of the chairmen who they are, but you know for a year you would be Mohawk Valley, Delaware, Southern Tier, um, and and actually the president of Binghamton is is, is the regional co-chair there. So that's more of an aside, but I would we are in it right now. I don't think we're coming out. There's other pro projects that are in it, other programs that are in it, so I would make sure you know who they, they are. And if you do submit a project, tell them about it and make sure they know how important it is. Because so, there is 20 points that they get out of 100. And, and I'm, I'm sorry, what's their title? Well, it's, it's the Regional Economic Development Councils. There's 10 of them in the state, nine outside of New York City. New York City is, is its own. And each council has regional co-chairs. Um, I can't think who the capital region one is right now, but. So of uh, 14,000 applications. 1,400. 1,400, yeah. 375 were approved. Do you know the stats for the ARC? Uh, the ARC, we, we normally get about 20 applications and fund 10 a year. 25, fund 10. Um, that's capped at 150,000. We have our own self-imposed state cap at $150,000. They're one to one match, so if you have if you, you know if you want 150, you have to match by 150. But we can in kind is, is permitted in the ARC. In kind is not permitted under the LGE program. That's got to be local cash. So just a, a little different nuance. Um, 
but. Mm. What time are we supposed to move? Well, we started a little bit late, but it's, it's about to wrap up. Um, we're just talking. Is there any opportunity to take away some of the barriers that we run into? Like if we wanted to move up a bit on fuel, for example, our district and our municipalities, our town or village, we were in different fiscal years. Mm -hmm. So that stops us dead in water. We need help to be able to take that barrier away because the outcome is what you're supporting. Right. But the, the barrier is what's initiated. So how do we get past that? So what would you, you have borrow money? What would you do to change your fiscal? We can't. Or, we can't. No, I mean, we won't, I, I'm not sure what the, what the solution would be. We're, we're, June, we're uh, July 1st right. to June 3rd. Right. Yeah, I mean, we always are looking for legislative changes or hurdles that we could, you know, I can't change it, but I mean, we can definitely put forth a recommendation to change it. And, you know, I, I would, if you have those, give them to us and, and, you know, we can move. I don't know how other areas got by it because there are some joint fuel projects between schools and municipalities, you know. Um, so somehow somebody answered that. You know, by I don't know. I, I have to look into it, but, okay. but that, that is something that we certainly contend with. But as you said, if other places have done it, it's either for us to find that out. Yeah. It, it, sure. And we can. We don't mind borrowing. We don't always have to know the answer as long as somebody else got the answer for us. That's great. Right. I mean, Hamilton County, I, I believe, is providing fuel to the majority of the local governments, including schools. On a county-wide program, okay. and, and you know I can again. Um, that's our general number. I'll give my email directly if you want. I'll, if you want to write it down, it's K Y L E. Dot Wilbur, W I L B E R. At D O S. At N Y dot gov. Us and and what, .ny.gov. .ny.gov, yeah. Thank you. But you can call the general number and, and ask for me. And Kyle Wilbur? Kyle Wilbur, yeah. And, and for you, sir, if you know Peg Ellsworth, she'll, 